Hi, everyone. There are two different types of quantitative data, discrete data versus continuous data. Quantitative variables can be discrete or continuous. And it's basically the difference between uh, throwing ice cubes in a cup, plunk, 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 that's like discrete variables. Flowing water is more like continuous variables. <laughs> what do I mean by that? A discrete variable has possible values can be listed, that can be listed. And there are always gaps between these possible values. A counting variable is a classic example of a discrete variable. For example, uh, the number of children that you have. On Mori, they kind of uh, determine this number, don't they? <laughs> All right, how many children do you have? Well, the value for this variable could be zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Uh, many counting variables can take on these various non-negative integers as possible values. So counting variables like counting the number of children you have, these are examples of discrete variables where the possible values of that discrete variable have clean gaps in between them. You can't have 2.1 kids, uh, even though uh, you're Donald Trump and you don't like Eric. You can't have 2.1 kids. <laughs> Now, a continuous variable, again, discrete, discrete variable is more like ice cubes, zero, one, two, three, four. A continuous variable has possible values that can vary smoothly over an interval. So a discrete variable has, has uh, values that are more like dots. It's like none, one, two, three, and so forth. A continuous variable is more like this. A continuous variable has possible values that vary smoothly over an interval. Uh, an example might be someone's weight. Someone's weight. So for example, uh, if we're guessing someone's weight at a carnival, okay, uh, we think that someone might be between 100 pounds and 101 pounds. Okay. Well, uh, the person, who knows, could be 100.5 pounds, 100.1 pounds. 100.1 pounds, 100.01 pounds, 100.001 pounds, and so forth and so forth. <laughs> the possible values vary smoothly over an interval. Each distinct pair of possible values, like 100 and 101, has another possible value somewhere in between, like these guys here. All right, do these examples on your own. Which of these are discrete and which are continuous? A, the number of residents in a household. B, the number, that is the number of dots, appearing on a six-sided die that you roll. C, the height of a student. D, the age of a president. That last one might be tricky. Okay, so let's answer these questions. The number of residents in a household, that is discrete. It's a counting variable because you could have no residents, one, two, three, and so forth. The number of dots appearing on a rolled six-sided die, well, the only possible values are one, two, three, four, five, and six, discrete. It's a discrete variable. C, the height of a student, well, like weight, that's going to be continuous. A student could have a height of, say, 1.9 meters, 1.99 meters, 1.999 meters. It's like limits in calculus. <laughs> continuous. The possible values can vary smoothly. The age of a president, actually, contrary to what my table might have suggested, that's actually continuous. Because a president could be 49 years old, uh, or if you think very <laughs> mathematically, 49.9 years old, 49.99 years old, and so forth. Now, 
this is a continuous variable, age. Uh, but it's easy to mistake this for a discrete variable because we tend to round ages down to integer values, right? Now, that's what I did in my president's ages table here. You saw, so you, you might have thought of these integers here, right? Uh, these nice whole numbers, and you might have thought, oh, discrete, right? The possible values could be like 51, 52, 53, and so forth. Uh, but no, okay? Because actually Washington was 57 years and so many months and so many days, so many seconds, whatever, right? Actually, age is a continuous variable. It's a continuous quantitative variable. However, we often display it uh, in a way that we almost think it's discrete. It looks discrete, but it's really continuous. All right. So we've talked about types of data. Next, we're going to talk about different ways of displaying them using a table or graphs. Next time.